Jesus Church. How are you doing? Just give your neighbor a high five and say, it's so awesome to be in the presence of the Lord. Tell your neighbor and say, Nchaburi lukhare tere nguwa kona mtlanje. Uyangbosisas koko sam. Hallelujah. Amen. Please you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. I just want to take this time and greet and welcome each and every one of you in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. And I especially welcome those of you who are visiting us. You are here for the first time, the second time, the third time. We welcome you. Thank you for fellowshipping with us. And we are also welcoming those who are joining us via live stream through various platforms, through our website, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Periscope, and so forth and so on. Welcome. We love you. God bless you. And thank you for joining us. And let's give ourselves a round of applause for being here. And let's welcome our visitors and let's welcome our online viewers this morning. Be excited in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Today, we are concluding our theme for the month, which is the revolution. And today, we are closing it with the subject radical service. There can never be a revolution without people who are willing to serve God in a radical and in a crazy way. Much as we need to have radical wisdom, much as we need to be radical givers, much as we need to praise and worship God in a radical way and possess radical faith, but we also need to serve God in a radical way. And today I am going to give you 10 principles of serving God in a radical way. Are we here? We are going to answer the question, how can I serve God radically? Amen. Exodus chapter number 7, and I am going to read verse number 16. And you shall say to him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me to you. This is God speaking to Moses, and he is sending him to Pharaoh. Saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness, but indeed, until now, you would not hear. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Speak to us in Jesus' name, amen. So in other words, you and I, just like the children of Israel, we were set free from the bondages of sin. We were delivered from the grips of Satan, from the world and its system, for one main reason, so that we can serve the Lord. And serving God is very broad, Bazalwan. Serving God speaks about, of course, working for him in his kingdom. Serving God means to worship God, to have a relationship with him, even through coming to church, Bazalwan. That is your service unto the Lord. Are we here, Bazalwan? And all of us, not some of us, all of us, we were set free, we were delivered, we were saved so that we can serve the Lord. But there is a specific way that God wants us to serve him. So the question is, how do I serve the Lord? Number one, we serve the Lord by serving his people. There is no way that we can disregard the people of God and claim that we are of service to our God. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 35 and verse 3, particularly the last part of that scripture, 
Now serve the Lord your God and his people. That's why even in as far as loving the Lord, we cannot claim to love God if we fail to love one another as brothers and sisters. We cannot claim to love God and fail to love his people. So if you want to show your love or to express your love unto the Lord, you need, to, you need to even show it through loving his people. So even in the same way, when it comes to serving God, you serve God through serving his people. Because God loves his people. God wants to touch people's lives. God wants to impact people's lives. God wants to save people's lives. Even Jesus Christ himself says, he did not come so that he may be saved, but he came so that he can be of service, so that he can save. Are we here? And that's why he is depending on you and I, because Jesus is sitting in the heavenly places as we speak. But we are his hands. We are his feet. Amen? Amen. So that we can touch other people's lives. We allow him to use us. We are the vessel that God can use in order to impact the lives of other people that God wants to impact. That's why, Barcelona, God puts us in local churches because that's where his people are. And that's where God sends people if he wants to impact them. So God is... Depending on us that even as he sends people to the church, they will find us ready to serve them. They will find us ready to teach them the ways of the Lord. They will find us ready to care for them. They will find us ready to love them. Amen. In the same manner that we were received and we were cared for and we were loved and we were taught and we were discipled, God is expecting us to do the same thing even to other people who are coming after us so that we can be of service to them. So God is looking at you and I today so that we can make that conscious decision that God, we are not just going to come here to be saved, but we are also here to serve others so that they can know you that you care for them. Amen. Many of us, we are the first point of contact for Jesus Christ. Whenever God draws people unto himself, he wants us to stand in, his, in the gap, amen? To stand in his place. So that people will know how is it like to be cared for by God. Are we together this morning, Bazalwan? Number two, how do we serve God? We serve God diligently. So in other words, our service to the Lord is not supposed to be sloppy because we are serving God. It is not supposed to be substandard because we are serving God. Listen to what the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 34 and verse 33. Thus Jos Josiah removed all the abominations from all the countries that belonged to the children of Israel and made all who were present in Israel diligently serve the Lord their God. This is the king who paved a way for everybody and pushed them to serve God in a diligent way. Because many of us, we have a mindset that we can be diligent at home. We can be diligent in our businesses. We can be diligent in our careers. We can be diligent in our studies. But when it comes to serving God, all of, all of a sudden we want to lower the standard. When, we, when it comes to the house of God, we don't want the best for the house of God. We don't want to up the standard for the house of God. We feel it is right for us to stay in houses that are good looking, great looking, and we, can, we will do whatever it takes to maintain them. We will do whatever it takes to do, you know, to, to cause our houses to, to be, you know, the best that we can ever have. But when it comes to church, we say, no, 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 we must just get, you know, cheaper things. Even when people want to give things, to church, they give things that they, do, they no longer need. Things that they want to throw away. What do people say? Take it to church. Because our mindset says, I cannot give my best when it comes to God. Somebody can be diligent at work. 
give their all in everything that they are given at work. But when they come to church, no. I'm going to take my time. When it comes to church, no. I'm not going to take my assignment serious. We are given an assignment to become a, a connect group leader. It's, it's one of those things that you think about after you have done everything else. When you are given a chance to, to serve in the house of God, maybe to use your gift. You are not going to give it your all. But when you are using your gift out there, you are the best that we can ever have. Out there. But in Batu Since we're in the you there's a there's a guy or there's a lady in your church. Oh, he's such a blessing. Who could tell it? He's doing this and that, but we are the last ones to find out because we, we, we've given you, we've tried you with several responsibilities. But you are, you are excelling in none of them. We have to literally beg you to get something out of you. We literally have to uh, at least, you know, give you attention in one or the other before you can show us, you know, your best. Why? Because it is the house of God. Because we get easily familiar with whatever it is that God is doing around us. And we are, it is so shocking that the, the God that we claim that we love but we don't want to give him our best. We claim we love him and his kingdom. But we, we are just relaxed. We can't compromise our time. But at least he sure. If there is more that is required. Even though Jesus Christ himself said. To whom much is given much is required. But we behave as if Jesus is actually bothering us. When he is asking us to serve in his house. Are we together? Number three. How do we serve God? We serve God with fear and with trembling. Psalm 2 verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear. And rejoice with trembling. So in other words. We are not going to serve in the house of God. Or in the kingdom of God. As if we are serving a human being. We need to understand that at the center of everything that is happening in the church, it is Jesus Christ himself. We are not here to serve me as a pastor. We are not here to serve, you know, one another as friends, but we are serving the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It is he who is instructing or commanding us to serve in his house. Colossians 3 verse 23 puts it this way. It says, whatever you do, do it heartily. As to the Lord and not to men. Have honor in your heart for what you are doing. When it says serve the Lord with fear, it does not say, you know, shake in your boots and be afraid of him or whatever. But it says maintain honor in your heart. Understanding that you are not serving a mere human being. You are serving the Lord. You see, I am praying, Barcelona, that God will help us understand that everything we are doing in church, we are not doing it for men. We are not doing it for the pastor. We are not doing it for the committee. We are not doing it for the elders. We are not doing it for our leaders in our various departments. But it is our service unto the Lord. And we need to do it with fear and trembling, honoring the one that we are serving. Otherwise, we take things light because we don't have honor. Can we imagine, Barcelona, if I lose honor for God, I can easily take advantage of you here at church. I can misuse you. I can abuse you. As long as I remove God in the equation, I can see this as my business. I can see this as something that I have achieved in my own strength and might. And I can easily take a look if I lose the fear of God. 
my service is going to show, my attitude is going to show that there is no longer the fear of the Lord in what I am doing. That's why we are seeing people doing crazy things out there. It is simply because man has lost the fear of the Lord in their heart. They are no longer doing it. They are now familiar because they are not seeing God tangibly or physically each and every day. And they choose to lose the fear of the Lord because they don't see him. He's been telling us that he's coming for the, I don't know how, how many years and we, are, we don't see him do any action. That's why I love it when the Bible says a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Let me tell you, do not think that scripture is applicable to, to an atheist. That scripture is also applicable to people who even claim to have a relationship with God, but they behave as if God does not exist. They behave as if God does not see, God does not hear, God is not watching over everything that they are doing. It's like I am serving him religiously because I'm trying to be a good person, but they don't understand the kind of a God that he is. So we need to have honor. In our hearts. That's why God asks in the book of Malachi, he says, he says, if I am your father, where is my honor? And he was saying, and I'm, paraphrase, I'm paraphrasing, you are showing honor to your masters. Many of us at work, let's show you how you. If your boss is giving you an assignment, you are Honoring, you are doing it with honor and you are trembling already. And it's not wrong, it's right. But how come when it comes to God, we are not showing at least the same level of honor, even though we are supposed to, God, to give God more honor, at least the same level of honor. We choose to postpone things pertaining to God. And the Bible says we must not be afraid of the people who, who, who only has the power to destroy the flesh. But we must be afraid of the one who is able to destroy both the flesh and the soul. So where is our honor as God's people? Where is our honor as the church? When we are serving God, can we show through our service that we have honor? And I like it because it says, and rejoice with trembling. Have you ever met a person who loses themselves when they are too happy? Uchabula abe erch or discal. And they stop thinking. They become too familiar. It's like when you are having fellowship with this person and you just show them that you are fine with who they are, they can relax. And all of a sudden, they take it to the next level. Because in there, you know, relax, man, don't, you know, I'm okay, I'm cool, I don't, uh, relax, and all of a sudden, hey, 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 Xasa, hey, hey, now I'm going to, hey, say, hey, come back, hey, come back, hey, get down, hey, 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 that person is too excited. Why? Because they, they rejoice, but without trembling. When, when your boss is being nice to you at work, it does not mean lose honor for them. It does not mean take them for granted. It does not mean now you can arrive five or ten minutes later because they chose to be nice. I, I worked with a colleague slash boss of mine 
back in the days when I was working for the South African police service, and I always share this story because it taught me a very big lesson. We would sit down in meetings in the morning, staff meetings, and, you know, they will give us uh, assignments and deadlines. And immediately as a section, we would sit down as a section. And immediately after that, my boss would say to me, let's go to the mall. During working hours. And I would jump into the car excitedly, go to the mall, uh, come back late, and then I'm lazy to do my reports and everything. And tomorrow... In the meeting, the very same boss who took me to the mall <laughs> says to me, Jacob, what's the report? And in my heart, I'm saying, dude, but Skoko, Aukumbuli, Izolo. Like in my heart, I'm saying that. So for now, I'm thinking we are pretending, you see. And I'm, I'm making excuses, but in my heart, I'm saying, ah, Skoko Sami, after last, is Okuluma, Skoko Sami, is Okumbula, Utpela, Izolo, Bese, Mola. And after the meeting, I would say, Pedi Zolo, Angetu, Mtatile, Sae, Mola. And he would say to me, it was up to you to say no. Because your job remains your job, even when I am being nice to you. So the fact that God says, my grace is sufficient and I love you. I no longer call you slaves. You are my friends. It does not mean enjoy the God. It does not mean let us now, you know, be familiar with one another. He says, if I have called you, I have still called you. If I'm calling you my friend. Yeah, it was the same God who says Abraham was his friend. All of a sudden, he shows up. He says, give Isaac. It's almost, it's almost like Abraham switched immediately and he understood that the Lord is talking. So when, when, when the Lord is talking, I don't ask questions. I take the sacrifice and I go. So fear the Lord. Understand that what you are doing it, you are doing it for the Lord. So someone to own the equation and put God in the equation then your attitude of, of serving in the church will change. Your attitude of coming to church will change because you understand you did not come here for men. You came here for God. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Number four, serve the Lord with gladness. That is what Psalm 100 and verse 2 says, be excited about serving the Lord. Smile, be happy. David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You know, sometimes you wonder when you are in church, you are asking yourself the way people are so grumpy. Even during the, the, the service, you, you, would, you, you, you would even ask, Because this is the house of the Lord where we are supposed to be happy, where we are supposed to be excited, where we are supposed to be glad, where we are supposed to be full of the joy of the Lord. Why are you so grumpy so early in the morning? You are grumpy. The ushers are trying to show you your seat. You are grumpy. You don't want to sit there. You want to sit at the back. You are so moody. Nobody is trying. Even when somebody is trying to show you love, you are grumpy. But we are happy. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Just be happy. You've been miserable for the whole week. Just take two hours in church just to be happy, just to be excited, just to rejoice, just to be glad, just to allow the joy of the Lord to fill your heart. You've been miserable. You've been hurt. You've been disappointed all throughout the week. For once, let your guard down and be happy. Tell your neighbor and say, be happy. The Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness. Smile at somebody. Play that keyboard when you are smiling. Play those drums when you are smiling. Play that guitar when you are smiling. Usher people why with a smile. Operate the camera with a smile. Take the pictures with a smile. Operate the slides with a smile. Be full of the joy of the Lord and tell yourself, I am here to serve the Lord. And the Lord has said, I need to serve him with gladness. Leave your moods at home. Leave your negativity at home. Leave your stinking attitude at home. Hey, 
Mundo nga tu rama tratla wa bona ma tratla wa ya bona ma tratla wa a ba tini popoya ya yo mundo nga tu ri popoya anke uje ino makulu mu ya mbon hey man hey hey cheer up cheer up rejoice au fooling is your be happy don't worry be happy Don't worry. Be happy. Dum bu dum bu dum bu dum bu dum. Do 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 do. Don't worry. Do 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 do. Be happy. Yes, the little song I wrote. Chabula, touch your neighbor and say, just smile a bit, man. Chill. The joy of the Lord is my strength. This is supposed to be a happy place. This is supposed to be a happy environment. This is supposed to be a place that when you were so stressed at work, when you were so, you know, stressed in your business and so challenged all through, this is supposed to be a place where you can be refreshed and revived. This is supposed to be a place where you can be yourself and just be at ease and be at peace with yourself. Hi. Hey, Maranamontulo. Marasapatine. <laughs> Ban record kuma Christmas party manje ngo December ukuthi lo mzalwane esontweni unje Oh Ah Sunday Sunday unjalo ne unje Sunday Oh Well let's start with Christmas party Davanda na barongo Let's start. The same person. The same person. Yeah. You are you asking yourself, Fat Makir, Met Joe, and your fro. What happened? Unto thee. Be happy, man. You are in the presence of your father. Unkunukulu Yagwazi, Uwazulele, Uwazu Hona, Uwazu Vuga, Uwazu Mumbi, Uwazu Nana Makeup, Uwazu Kezile, Uwazu Nunu, Uwazu Kogile, Uwazi, Uwa Yagwasta Shegi. Hey, um, so you know, we are one, two, three. Uh. Madam Kitini. Oh, no, Popo, no, so young, no man can say. No, Popo, no, so young, no man can say. Kiss why, ah, Madison Dwin. Today. Be happy, be excited, be glad. I am a child of God. 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 One, two, 
right. My God, today, you must not be grumpy. Ah, my God. Labantuana, but right. I was right, Labantuana. Labantuana, that's why I was right, Labantuana. I was right, Jacob, I was right, Labantuana, but right. So that when you, when the enemy wants to destroy you out there, you, you, you have a place to run to. Where, where you can still be yourself in a holy and in a righteous way. Where, where you can just have... As long as it's a sanka in Gileni, Sambes Funa, Amasavana, Silla, Silla, Sinji. Sinji, Sinji, yeah, and got your half. Must get us for so far it the sumay. My God, today, what a mystery! What a mystery! Happy people who are Christians, we are happy. Be a Christian and be happy. Yo, mbana lo, hey, haiko ni kere kele mbo pile. Number five. No baba kwa kasa vale hegati, yey. Ucheswe kishin, ucheswe kamren. Kya vufuwa. Utama, unambita ama sweet kamo yu vufuwa nje kisin. Oh, Jesus. Oh, gosh, yam. So you are being a little baba at your blani. Because it's training the baba. So you are born. As a sabu baba at your blani, it's sweet. As a town, it's because it's going to be a born. We are going to be a little bit of 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 a Number five, serve the Lord without distraction. Don't allow anything to distract you in the house of the Lord, especially when you are serving God, working in the church of Jesus Christ. Don't let anything distract you. Jesus said, offenses will even come. You'll be offended at church because there are people, these are not robots. These are not angels. These are not computers. You'll be offended in one way or the other. But the Bible says, serve the Lord without any distraction. Don't let any offense distract you. Focus on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. There is no human being who is worthy of your service to the Lord. Nobody must make you compromise your service to the Lord. Dead or alive. Nobody in this church. No matter how religious they can look. Myself included. Don't allow me to distract you from serving the Lord. Give yourself fully to God. And serve the Lord. Wholeheartedly without any distraction. Tell yourself I'm here to serve God. 
Because as a Christian, you are supposed to forgive. As a Christian, the Bible says, get rid of bitterness, anger, malice, jealousy, pride. So if Umzalwan and your brother comes to you to try and fix an issue between the two of you, it should be sorted there. But Jesus says, take it to the leadership of the church. And they say, Atu Jesu again, Uma inga lungi noma so mise in the utabaluenu to the leadership of the church. Utu Jesu, treat that person as a heathen. Mtatenje wa mkheteni. Utu Jesu, ahusho me. Utu mtatenje wa mkheteni. Nama yama kamfailu understand what behavior so. Ngoba, akuti kwa hapa. Ikop kwa hapa. Ufelu mkola ilenje. Maka kiniki attitude to all. Ayy. Serve the Lord without any distraction. Focus on Jesus. Do what you came here for. Serve the Lord. Worship him. Find a department where you can serve. Serve with a pure heart. The Bible says, blessed are those who are pure in heart. Purify your heart. Let me tell you, you cannot afford. Unforgiveness will hinder you in your walk with God. Bitterness will hinder you in your walk with God. It will even interfere with your prayers, with your relationship with God. If you are angry, you are bitter in your heart, you cannot even pray effectively. That's why in Iti Minagwe, there is no one who is worthy. Because Lord Muntu will not answer your prayers. So that your life can change. Upige na lo mundo. Look, usata ni maga shulego ukufa ketaven. Uzo kuba. Esondwe. Yeah. If the devil cannot get you to smoke, to drink, to fornicate, he will send somebody to offend you. As you know, I've 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 seen I've, I've seen that people who are too religious. And who think they are too holy, those get easily offended. Because they feel almost like God. It's like even when you come to me, you must be like Moses, take off your shoes because in the home you're in land. Because you feel that you are holy than everybody. My dress code is trying to deal with religious spirits. I'm just irritating demons of tradition and religion and culture. It's going to include Zaki. Mfundis here, hello. Who palu epi? Who do mfundis fa ila kerenga? People who are just offended by everything. He's here. And he's letting me become his distraction. Because of the way I look. Sugagim, fix your eyes on Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. You, you see, if you are spiritual enough, you will sense. You will sense a spiritual thing about me, even when I look like this. If you are spiritual enough, but if you are too religious... 
and self-righteous. And only you are holy. You will, be, you will be distracted. Number six. Serve the Lord with sincerity and truth. Be sincere. Be truthful. Be yourself. Don't put two faces. When you come to church, you have one face. At home, you have a different face. Have one face. Serve the Lord in sincerity and truth. You will read those scriptures at home because I'm out of time. Joshua 24 and verse 14. Number seven. Serve the Lord with all your heart and all your soul. Put your heart into it because God, for everything that we do for God, whether we are giving, whether we are praying, God goes beyond what we are doing and he looks at our hearts. That, that is what the Bible says. It tells us that he does not look as man sees. Because the Bible says, Mina now is bearing apart, but the Bible says, God looks at the heart. You can read 1 Samuel 12 and verse 20 at home. Amen. Number eight. Serve the Lord with your treasures or your possessions. Exodus 10, verse 26. Everything that you have, your gift, your talent, your ability, your money. Your wisdom, your intelligence, your hands, your head, your feet, all of them, we, ne we need to use them to serve the Lord. They are supposed to be available at any point because there is nothing that you and I can ever have. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Without God. I am nothing without God. I have nothing without God. So there is absolutely nothing that I'm supposed to reserve or hide and say, God, you can't have this. You can have that, that, but not this. We are supposed to serve the Lord with our possessions, with our resources. If God wants my gift, he will get it. If God wants my wisdom, he will get it. If God wants my intellect, he will get it. If God wants my money, he will get it. If God wants my clothes, he will get it. If God wants my house, he will get it. If God wants my car, he will get it. If God wants my shoes, he will get it. If he wants my voice, he will get it. Because I cannot claim to have received these things with my own strength and power. Everything is available, Lord, for you. Can God walk into your house and point anything that he needs? Look, when you are praying for a financial breakthrough or for provision, you are not asking God to come down from heaven. You are asking God to touch somebody to give you that money. So why are you buying it for me? No, when you are Number nine. As I close. We need to serve the Lord with our families. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. As parents, train up your children to serve God. What kind are you? Sasa, masetiwa na ngu u u u u u u u u la petave. Unga lili. Beso funa tina noh si zok begi zand. So peti storm bumbro na mi eh agasabu yeka ya efsu aheti sete masete. Kunabazali, do you know that? You know, parents are very strange. Kunabazali, but Kareli, but Abantu, and Ababuya laid lies on twin. Begase on twin. Begase on twin. When they have that day, go up on nine. S on twin. S on S on twin. Last concert, Konu Jesus. Okay. Wait. Who can remember about one phone? Ella, one giver. A phone in. Ginga Konu Baba Konu. So, angas no was wuti punyole late or in bigne transport. One give a phone in. I said, my guy, I wonder. You get worked up like this. You get worked up like this. How? Two hours. Umana kufi yango six. Wapuma ngo nine. 
in fact, I was pumang onan. Was figure ngon endling onan. So we issue. As a son do it. Maramakti will come and call the whole day. Baya e konsi ninda ole sepitor. Eh? I zoo. I wanna shem. I wanna bati. Ute zoo. Lom tuan we call or as lom tuan we write. Ah yes, correlent that was a pitor lab. A fountains. Bahambile by a fountains, eh? Whole day. We are not concerned. We are as a fountain. Zina spuya call for we are as a fountain. Tina sakula gain to use a bum riti le park. My God. See a tripping. Maruza son two and two hours, you are crying. And who's really complain? So what I go to do, Baba or Maga Tan is on to it. I think Zamega <laughs> Number 10, let's stand on our feet as I close. And lastly, the Lord. I was, I was on a season to it. I didn't care. And lastly, the Lord wants us to serve him under the influence of the anointing. That is how God wants us. My God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God does not want us to serve him with our own strength and power. He wants to anoint us for it. Those of you who are here, during the iConnect, I mean the Ignite experience on Friday, will know better. God wants to put that anointing upon our lives so that we can serve him better, serve him effectively, not with our own strength and might, not with our own wisdom and understanding. God wants us to serve him under the influence of his power, under his mighty hand. So that we will not grow weary in well-doing. So that we will never get tired. But we will serve him with all of our hearts, all of our souls. Lift up your hands in this place and just pray for yourself for the next 30, 60 seconds. Ask him to use you. Ask him to anoint you. Ask him to grant you the grace to serve him in his house, in his kingdom, in your life. Surrender your life to him. Surrender your life to him. Jesus, we give ourselves to you. We give ourselves away. We give ourselves to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, use us for your glory. Use us in your house. Use us in our, in our town, in our city, in our nation. Use us, Lord, for your own will, for your own plan, for your own purpose. Use us, Master, in the name of Jesus Christ. Use us. Oh, we want to serve you. We desire to serve you. In the name of Jesus. Mandala basaka bayaba. Sambala baya mazanga malama ya mandare de besaya. Bora la basaka baramanda. Mandala bazabla graka paravazia la mando rende liba kazika deya. Paria malabako zambro saplo gra grete zentiri di bizia. Gendel Mendor Melber Feso Gra Kampan Bendur Pal Farkos Kente Dibaya. We want to be of service to you, Lord. We want to be of service to you. We want to be vessels that you can use, vessels that you can fill. Vessels, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. 